What's your sign? I'm an Aries. What's your sign? A Pisces. You me, girl, we right here. <laughs> I get you What's now. your birthday? March 13th. Wow, that's my birthday too. Oh my goodness, that's why you're not affectionate. We're the same person. <laughs> oh, no. Nah. That's crazy. You gotta go. My name is Kamaya. I'm an entertainer, songwriter, and recording artist for Interscope Records. If I wasn't doing music, I'd probably be a therapist because I like talking to people about their problems. I had an awakening moment when I needed to get to know myself after I started gaining my success and traction because my brother passed away and I lost myself and I just didn't know what to do to make me happy anymore. I just had to dig deep inside myself and go therapy. My name is Chris Kazi Roll. I'm a matchmaker and a relationship coach and I've been helping people to find love and keep love alive for nine years. I help my clients to figure out who is their ideal partner, um, who, who they want to be ideally, as well as the ideal relationship that they would love to have. Come on! Uh, so happy, my guy. <laughs> hey, how are you feeling? I'm good, how are you? Come on in, I was just making some tea. What made you want to get into therapy? I always wanted to major in psychology, because mm -hmm. I grew up in like, foster care and shit, and I wanted really? to like help the kids. And then like, I always talk to people about their problems. So I started measuring it in college and I told myself like, I'm gonna give my all to my music. If that don't work, this is my plan B. Very cool, very yeah. cool. Thank you. I don't know if they told you, but I, I'm also from foster care. Really? Yeah. That's dope. I think that people who go through foster care, you wanting other kids not to go through that. Mm-hmm. You know? See how it, how it works out? You want to help people because you wasn't helped? When you were in foster care, were there somebody that you went and talked to? I didn't want to express myself to people. I didn't know how to express myself to people. Mm -hmm. And then the way that people were presenting therapy to me, it was in the way of which I didn't want to do it. It was more yeah. so, you got to go here, oh, and then you yeah, get there, they're giving you snacks and blowing smoke up your ass. It's like, this ain't helping this ain't me. Real. Yeah. yeah. You were dating somebody and... Yeah. It, my situation was my brother died during my rise to success. Yeah. So it left me in a bad depression. So it right. made me not really accept love. Right. I was pushing away all the people I should have kept around me, mm -hmm. which trickled down to my relationships. And then so, how did it shift? Or is I it mean, I'm single right now. I don't feel like it shifted. I feel like I had to deal with the fact mm -hmm. that everybody can't be wrong. Sometimes you could be the problem. Like mm -hmm. you're pushing people away because right. you're sick right now, you know? Mm -hmm. Deal with that sickness and maybe when it's time for you to love again, you'll be able to accept it and be yeah. the right person that you should be for the person who's dating you. You're in your own form of therapy right now. Yeah, when I get mad, it's automatically, leave me the fuck alone, fuck you. Like, gotcha. and that's not cool. I hear you saying that, hey, I needed her to just know that, hey, I need space. Mm -hmm. I need time to calm down. Now, what has she said as feedback to you? Learn how you talk to me. You watch your fucking mouth when you talk to me. Come on, yeah. <laughs> That's a perfect example of what you're doing today. The people are so focused on what they want that they're not actually hearing the other person. Mm -hmm. So a great uh, um, piece of wisdom is this. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Mm. So what I want to do is I want to break down how we're going to carry out the therapy. This first one, you'll have to create the space. You have to shift the energy. Mm. One way to shift the energy is to first understand like how'd you you know how'd you two meet each other? What do you what do you love about each other? Mm -hmm. You know, just hearing, just listening to what they have to say. Then once you heard what the issue is, then you're gonna separate. Couples when they're together for a while, they stop being fully honest. They don't wanna upset the, the other, other person. person by telling the truth. And then you when you bring them back together, you're trying to get the middle ground. You're trying to get clear about how each person see mm -hmm. the situation, what it is they want the other person to understand. Mm -hmm. And then when you come back, you're trying to get them to, to be together. Yeah, to meet halfway. The key is to use this word, I want y'all to meet halfway. Mm -hmm. Say it back one more time. What's the first part? Listen to whatever it is that's going on. Listen to then we're going to divide the motherfuckers yes. and figure out which one of the motherfuckers is really tripping. Right. Then we're going to make them both realize both of y'all motherfuckers are tripping. tripping. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Perfect. It's funny. She got it. Hey, George, she's got it. I'm Ania. And I'm Daring. We've been together for two years now. Recently we broke up because she was going through a bit of depression within herself. I just struggled a lot with like my confidence and just loving myself and I feel like if you don't love yourself it's kind of hard for you to love someone else. Hey guys. <laughs> hey. Just want you guys to be your best selves and comfortable. That's why I'm relaxed with my feet up. Let's go through these steps to help you guys through your relationship issues. Okay. So how do you guys meet? Out of each other's dorm, friends' dorms, and we just met from there, and then from there we just grew a great friendship. 
Okay, cool. What do you guys love about each other? I like that he like can help me be myself, just push myself and be my best self, I guess. That's cute. She's very open-minded and she doesn't judge people. So we bring you guys here today. We have different love languages and I feel like that can be like a hindrance in any relationship. And also, um, I was going through a depression, so I feel like, you know, I kind of need a little bit of guidance with that. So how did you guys first hear about love languages? I heard about it through her. She'd be on the internet Googling everything. <laughs> so basically, I was on the internet like Googling stuff because I was like, I just don't understand why he just can't get it, like get yeah. it together or whatever. So I'm like, we have a different love language. And he was like, man, I don't know what that is. Like, that's some fake stuff. Like, I don't care. Like, and even if we do have different love languages, it says here, because then he Googled it because he was like, all right. <laughs> so he was like, it says here that you could work through if you guys have different love languages. What are you guys is different love languages um so mine is words of affirmation and his is affection um, yeah i could have said that myself dang like, but yeah <laughs> i'm more like affectionate and i'd be like what's what's up with you like why don't you want to do nothing like why do you want to you don't want to show any type of affection and i just be like whatever no you get angry i might get a little angry here and there but <laughs> <laughs> okay so when you get angry what does that look like how do you think that makes <laughs> her feel oh, oh, careful. <laughs> In the fool. She said I act like a, a kid throwing a tantrum. What's your sign? I'm an Aries. What's your sign? A Pisces. You me, girl? We right here. <laughs> I get you When's now. your birthday? March 13th. Wow, that's my birthday too. Oh my goodness, that's why you're not affectionate. We're the same person. <laughs> oh, no. <nah. laughs> that's crazy. We gotta go. How do you guys the signs clash and how are you guys compatible? Well, the good thing about me, she says I'm like super confident. I'm emotional, like super emotional and everything like hurts my feelings. So I feel like he helps me a lot with like my confidence and like, you know, reassuring me. That's beautiful. <laughs> so now we're gonna separate you two. I'm gonna bring you guys back together after we separate you and get to the bottom of your underlying problem. So you mentioned you went through a depression. What was it that you were feeling during that time? Basically what happened was I was on birth control and the birth control like messed up my skin like completely. Kind of didn't want to go out and he's a very people person so he wants to like, you know. Be social. Like, I just felt this immense like sadness mm -hmm. and I just didn't know how to like get out of it and he didn't understand so that was kind of like, well, why don't you want to do anything? Like, if you get up, you'll be able to do stuff. And then, then that's when it just blew up and we kind of like just broke up for a oh. second. Are you willing to give him what he needs? I was raised with my mom and my grandma. Like, I've never really like been in an affectionate household in the first place. So mm -hmm. I don't really know, like, you know, I don't have like a family dynamics, but as far as like a role for what a relationship should be, I've yeah. never really like had that, so. Yeah. Do you feel like there's some things about you that he doesn't understand that you think he should get? I just want him to learn how to, I guess, healthily process the emotions. I feel like as Pisces, we shouldn't act off emotions because mm -hmm. in the heat of the moment, we'll say or do some things that we don't necessarily mean yeah. and then later live to regret it. Mm -hmm. And being that he obviously wants affection, that'll push him away more mm -hmm. because he's thinking that you're attacking him. Right. Not understanding that it's coming from a place of vulnerability. Yeah. I get that, I feel that. Hey there. What's good? So if it was something that you would want your girlfriend to do, what would it be? I can't really be affectionate with anyone else but her. Right. So sometimes I just feel like she just doesn't do enough of that. And I'm yeah. just like, I'm just stuck in like limbo sometimes. How did you feel during the time that your girlfriend was going through depression? I just felt like at times I didn't know what to do. Like, I felt like my words just weren't good enough sometimes. Like, yeah. What kind of relationships did you see when you were growing up? Mainly I saw my mom and my dad he kind of has like an angry side to him. And I feel like that's probably where I get it from. And I try, I always tell myself, I don't want to be nothing like him. Like, I don't want to be like him. Like, I used to tell myself that growing up as a young kid. And it's crazy because I see myself more in him now than anything. Whenever I like go off on her or something, yeah. or change my tone. I just be like, damn, like, I'm trying to knock this real quick. Like, get yeah. this out of here. Was there affection between your parents? Very rarely, like, I wouldn't really see it like, my dad isn't really the most affectionate person. Like, Do you feel like that's why you feel the need to want affection? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Are you willing to give her what she needs in order to get what you need? Most definitely. That's not even a, a question. I really love her because she's, she's super open. Like, she ain't never talking negative about nobody. We're both super passionate about music. Like, she loves music. She's trying to get into music and whatnot. And I'm just there to push her and help her. Sometimes she feels like I'm going a little too hard on her, but 
Like, I just want to see her successful. Like, oh, I, I love her smile. Like, she don't like her smile, but I like when she smiles. She doesn't feel good in herself. And I'm like, you're beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. relax. I want you two to verbalize to each other what it is you want. I want you to be more understanding of my emotions. So that means if I don't want to go somewhere or if I'm just having a day, that you would just understand that and not be angry about it. What is your response to what she just asked for? I can do that. You know, sometimes I don't really want to go somewhere without you, but that's understandable. Now, what is it that you want from her? Take charge. Come give me a hug. Come give me a kiss. Stop making me come to you all the time. Okay. You got that? Yeah. That's good? You got that's that. a deal? I could definitely try, but I just need you to be more patient and understanding with it because sometimes, you know, you'd be wildin'. So if you could like meet me halfway, then we got a deal. Okay. All right. I'm not be wildin'. I think it's important to love yourself to give people an example of how to respect you because the way you portray yourself is the way a person is going to approach you or converse with you. If they don't see that you have a certain level of respect or, you know, self-love for yourself, they'll take advantage of you. The most important aspect of loving someone else is loving yourself first. What up, squad? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can hit the subscribe button. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram by clicking the links below. Until next time, thanks for watching all Deaf Music.